a 20 hectare site on the island of Rousey in Orkney. Um, it's, it's owned privately, it's not owned by RSPB, so we've been working with the landowner. Prior to our intervention, it hadn't been managed at all for about 50 years. So we've come along, we have used external funding to fence the whole perimeter, it's about one and a half kilometres of fencing. And we are working with a local farmer who grazes the site under a grazing plan, um, targeting conservation management for, for waders. This was vegetation that was about this high, completely thick, dense and unsuitable for waders at all. So what's happened now, and this is a really good example of how cows and conservation grazing, when done, you know, done in, in, in the right way, can create ideal wader habitat. So what's happened here is the cows have come in, they've grazed through quite a lot of the thick grass. So they've got, you've now got these kind of like shorter areas, which means that, you know, waders can move through, they can feed in some of these open bits that the cows have trampled down, um, and they can feed among the short vegetation. But what's also happened is the cows have left these kind of more tufty areas. Um, you know, so we've got this kind of like varied structure. Now, these areas are really important because waders can nest in them. They like nesting in some of these longer tussocks because it's, it's cover, it's, you know, they can hide the nest easier from predators, but also it's cover for chicks. So when chicks are walking around, they've got this cover and if adults start alarming, they can go and hide in there. What's also happened here, which you can, which you can see is obviously the cows create cow pats and <laughs> cow pats are an excellent source of invertebrates. Um, so they're not only they're grazing, but they're also actually creating, indirectly creating feeding areas for waders as well. Good for here because they're not too big and they've got small feet and what have you, they don't make a great deal of impact on the land and they, they'll also, because they're Shetlands, they'll eat all kinds of different grasses and they'll, and they'll do well on them. This has been a real bonus for us because obviously we have the land next door and it, it allows us to bring them onto here and rest the land that we've got and we can also see them improving the land here. You know, it gets, it gets better the longer they're on here, which is great. You know, so it's, I like this win-win situation. We, we get the grazing and they actually improve the land. It's, it's good all round. Just starting to dig a scrape so this is the very first few kind of bits being taken out so during the spring when the birds are breeding this dries out um, and it dries out at the key point when wader chicks are hatching and they need feed they need areas to feed in so the, the, the main idea here is to dig this deeper so it holds water for longer and it creates a wet area for chicks and waders to feed in throughout the breeding season So this is an example of 
the ideal foraging habitat that this pool was created for waders. You have the kind of shallow edge here where the water's dropped back slightly. That means it's, you know, for a bird that doesn't swim to feed, that means that it can now walk along that edge and it can access all the invertebrates just living in the edge of the water. The mud and obviously where the cows have stood, you've got little pools as well. And the way obviously it's dropped back, you get these little kind of pockets of water. And all this is just, yeah, absolutely full of invertebrates, things like crane fly larvae. So the whole, the whole area now is just a nice, easy, um, reliable foraging area for waders to walk around in and get all the food they need throughout the breeding season. So we, we carried out baseline breeding bird surveys prior to any work occurring at all. Resurveyed it this year and the numbers had, had gone up, well, yeah, significantly. So we went from no, there was no lapwing breeding here at all because it was unsuitable. This year we had 12 pairs after the first year. We had a similar kind of increase in curly numbers, red shank, snipe, all moved on to the site in quite impressive numbers. and. Yeah, it's, it's been quite, quite the response and we're obviously really, really pleased. <laughs> okay. A significant percentage of, of breeding lapwing and curlew in the whole of Scotland now are in Orkney. So it's, it's definitely worth targeting here now while we've still got enough birds that when we do this kind of management work, we can get that response. You need to get in now before that population gets too low. When you spend the winters putting funding bids in and you're doing all the, yeah, doing all the admin and all the kind of reporting throughout, yeah, you go out in the spring and you see the, all the breeding birds and what difference it makes. Yeah, curly there in the background. That's, you know, that make, it definitely makes it all worth it. That's what you want to see. So, yeah, that's, that's the most enjoyable part.